Senator Seward. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. I rise to take note of Senator Con Conroy's answers to my questions on the Woodside's uh, proposed development at James Price Point and note that the government obviously has not thought about how it is going to carry out how it's going to undertake its decision making process on James Price Point. I wasn't asking the minister about what the decision was. Clearly, clearly they are yet to make that. What I want to know and what the community wants to know is how they are going to make that decision. It is very clear that the Woodside envi environmental impact assessment document is, is unsatisfactory. It is not a comprehensive assessment of the potential impacts of this development on James Price Point. And let us take the whales uh, as an example. I was up there myself last week and have a fairly good understanding now of the whale population in the area and also of Woodside's very gross underestimation of the number of whales for a start that are used in the area. And if they have so grossly underestimated the number of whales using that area and that the fact that this area is a whale nursery and is in fact the home of the whales, not the Antarctic, the whales are born in, at this, in this area. They are conceived in this area. They go down to feed in Antarctic and come back up to give birth in this area. Woodside says there's around a hundred, uh, around a thousand use that area within the eight kilometre zone in the whole of the migration season. Well, the community monitors in, a, monitors in a very scientific manner have already, in the first five weeks of the migration period, identified 1,698 whales, including at least 99 mother and calves, with some other sightings that are yet to be confirmed. In other words, this area is a very important area. I asked about the spinner dolphins also, the miniature spinner, spinner, spinner dolphin, which Woodside spending $80 million on an environmental assessment process, oh, so it must be OK because we've spent lots of money, managed to grossly underestimate the number of whales for a start. Community monitoring program have already highlighted that, for, uh, highlighted the fact that they've grossly underestimated it. Spinner dolphins, the miniature spinner dolphin, they didn't manage to find. They spent $80 million, but they didn't manage to find. Oh, and also they didn't manage to find the turtle nesting sites. If they'd asked the local community, they could have told them where they are and the fact that they do use this area for nesting. But according to Woodside, they don't. And not to mention the bilbies that they never seem to manage to find. That's just a start of the failures of the environmental impact assessment process undertaken by Woodside. And in answer to my question, the government could not answer my question. They couldn't tell us how they're going to be making the decision. They couldn't tell us whether they are going to carry out some independent monitoring. However, the minister did manage to answer a question I didn't ask. I've got to say I'm quite grateful because the community does want to know what's been happening with its Section 9 application. And, you know, you can't rush these things. I think they put it in at least 12 months ago. You can't rush these things. So I will take that answer back to the community and let them know that the minister is still undertaking um, that assessment. Last week, in, uh, for the James Price Point uh, development, the, an assessment of it, the Australian Institute carried out an assessment of, in fact, a lot of the state government's own uh, documentation and pointed out that the project will be a net cost to the taxpayers of WA and they will spend more money supporting this project than they will in collecting taxes. That, in fact, it may lead to the loss in other places in WA, them losing their jobs as a, as a result of the impact of this particular um, development. One wonders then, of course, why the WA government is so strongly focusing on James Price Point when this particular site is an economic. Could it be that they have other plans for the site? Of course they deny this, but it is highly likely. 97 per cent of the workers there will be fly in, fly out. So much to the myth that this is going to generate so much local employment. It will reduce the Kimberley's reputation as a world-class tourism destination, leading to a reduction in employment in the area's other largest employment sector. It will increase demand on community services, such as health and police and cause inflation in the Broome region for housing and things like that, similarly it has in other places in Western Australia. This is a bad development. It shouldn't go on country at James Price Point. The government should look at other 
places for that development, and the federal government needs to outline how they intend undertaking their assessment process. Thank you, Senator Seward.